How do you describe your characters in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels? Old. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm the elderly guy <laughs> who's done very well, reached the top of his game, getting slightly bored, wants a bit of chaos in his life, meets this guy on a train, thinks, hey, I used to be like him. I want to be like him. But, no, I don't. I want to smooth him up a bit. You know, make him look a little better and, you know, I'm thinking all the time, but he, he just con someone for 20 quid. I'm conning people for millions. Thinking that's that's the game. That's what it used to be like. You know, it's a bit like it's a bit like us actors. You know, I've done a lot. He's not done so much. I sometimes get a bit jaded, you know, about my life, career, and stuff. Don't get me wrong. I've got a great family, but. Sometimes in this business you get a little bit, oh, okay, another job, here we go again. But this for me was like, oh, it's going to be some fun. And it is, it's just turning out to be a lot of fun. And he's just having a ball. And it's just great watching him growing up and thinking, <laughs> hey, I'm bringing the kid on here. Yeah. So it's kind of life mirroring art or art mirroring life. Yeah. That says my character. Now you. No, well, I mean, I think you've hit it on the head. You know, my character is a guy doing kind of small time grift who basically tumbles that this guy is basically doing the same that he's doing, but on a far greater, far grander, more professional scale. And is kind of so overwhelmed that he wants to learn at the feet of the master. I've never done a musical before. This man started me and my girl and took it to Broadway. So if you want that kind of parallel, it's there in spades, you know. So how would you describe the show in maybe two or three words? Big. Great big stuff. <laughs> great, actually, great big stuff. Brilliant. Yeah. Perfect title. Probably an alternative title. It's a Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, um, you know, Jerry Mitchell is the director of this. He directed um, Legally Blonde here that I think people would be familiar with. But Kinky Boots in, in the States has just won, like, every prize going. It, it, it recouped its money in, in record time. Nothing has ever made its money back quicker than Kinky Boots. And the reason for that is it's packed. It's kill for a ticket stuff. And the guy who's capable of delivering that on Broadway and Legally Blonde in this country so, uh, had seen Dirty Rotten Scoundrels in America um, and I think worked on it, hadn't he? But knew it wasn't perfect and had um, seen Robert. It was in Me and My Girl, wasn't it? And it had it, it, always been Jerry Mitchell's lifelong dream to be able to get his hands on this guy and work with him. And so, the, I mean, you know, this show, when you see Robert in it, it feels like it must have been written for him. It's so spot on. And I think that's largely, you know, the way that Jerry's approached the piece in terms of kind of mapping Lawrence onto, you know, what you can do. And then what's been probably less pleasant for you, but, you know, more challenging is then really stretching this guy back to what he was doing 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, the love story between Jerry Mitchell and Robert Lindsay is one that, like, Jerry always thought, if I get my hands on him, I'll make him do what he had to do with me and my girl. And fast forward 30 years, it's like, this guy's still pulling it out of the bag. You know, I, I didn't really know what to expect, but, you know, you've seen that second number. Well, that's the second of two dance routines that this guy performs back to back and looks spotless doing. You know, so great big stuff is like, the requirement of you is to be able to do great big stuff. The requirement of the ensemble is great big stuff. The orchestration is full of great big stuff. The set is great big stuff. You know, it's, it's a full on, full out class show that at the same time should make you laugh, laugh your ass off. With, with essentially a great story, you know, that's the other thing. Because everyone keeps going banging on about the movie. Well, the movie's not important to us because this is a musical. It's got the story. And the thing about Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, and what's the movie that Dirty Rotten Scoundrels is based on? Oh, Bedtime Stories. Bedtime Stories. But then the, all these con films, you know, from Ocean's Eleven to whatever, you know, people love a con man. They love, they love a rogue. And there's two wonderful rogues, you know, a successful one, one wanting Idiot to be successful. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, low class one, upper class one. And it's a class story, but class. But you see, my character, I just think, was from his roots. He's, he's a, he was a lad once upon a time who has gone like that. And of course, our business is full of stories like that. 
Yeah. The Something other weird like thing I think about this is all the people, all the British people I know who saw this show on Broadway couldn't have loved it more. And my, in, my hunch is that even though it ran on Broadway for, I mean, I think about three years, it wasn't loved. There wasn't, you know, there was lots of great stuff about it, but it wasn't adored. And I think that the reversioning, the tightening, the kind of the rewrites that have come in, we are absolutely on track to deliver something, you know, that is, is so perfect for people who love a good West End musical. This, you know, if you love a good West End musical, this isn't a good West End musical. This is an unbelievably good West End musical. And, and I think, you know, if that's your bag, then you'd be foolish to miss this one, really. And Catherine Kingsley's legs. <sighs> oh, hi, Catherine. <laughs> so it's on at the Savoy Theatre. Is it a venue you, you like playing? Have you been... You've this man been has played there for a year? I did a year as Richard III at the Savoy in 1999, 2000, something like that. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a different return. <laughs> You know, although do, King Richard does make a brief appearance. He does, in our show, yeah. Yeah, and I've got the hump, so... And just lastly, um, for a first-time visitor to London, what would you recommend to do as sort of the first thing to do? The first thing the to list? do when you arrive in London... Book a ticket for Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. On Without. message. On message. I stayed at a hotel last night in London, and there was our poster. On... On the desk which I then spread out because <laughs> <laughs> I was paying my bill. Do that thing of putting all the leaflets at no, the I front didn't. of the... I just, I just put all the leaflets and then laid them all out. So <laughs> kind of standing there and people at the Japanese toilets go, oh, I know. <laughs> Excellent. Um, the first thing you should do when you go to London is go to the pub. Nowhere has pubs like London, so sit in one of those for 10 minutes, try some proper London pride or something like that. Oh. It'll be the cheapest thing that you do while you're here. So enjoy it while it lasts.